This FizzCast is about a collision problem. Please pause the video and read through the question carefully. Having done that, you would have identified that we have a 1400 kilogram freight car which is initially at rest and it's, and it's resting against a spring on a, at the end of a railroad track. We're told some information about the spring constant. Uh, we're also told that the car gets hit by a second car. That's the collision that we care about. The second car has a mass of 8,600 kilograms and it's moving. We're given its initial speed, 9.5 meters per second. And something about the collision, that once they collide, the two objects couple together. What means they share a common velocity. So this actually is a specific kind of collision. It's a totally inelastic collision. What we're asked to find is what's the maximum compression of the spring, which is going to be some distance. And we're also asked to find the speed of the two cars once they rebound uh, from the spring. So let's interpret that question. Once again, we said it was a totally inelastic collision. Now, for all collisions, momentum is conserved. So we can write that down as the change in momentum is zero. So the momentum before the collision is equal to the momentum after the collision. But for a totally inelastic collision, that means that the initial kinetic energy does not equal the final kinetic energy. That's kind of important. So <clears throat> that's something about the kind of collision that we have. Once the two objects are coupled together, they're then going to move against the spring. And so what's actually going to happen there is that the, uh, there's going to be a force acting on the car, slowing them down. In fact, the final kinetic energy is going to be transferred into the, um, and it, the potential energy stored in the spring and then that's going to be transferred back to the two cars uh, as some kinetic energy after they rebound from the spring. So in fact, what's going on there is actually energy conservation. So or conservation of mechanical energy because there's no uh, friction forces involved. So we've got two things going on here. So let's develop the problem to see how we can tackle that. So what I've got is my initial mass m1 with some velocity v1 which I know it's traveling along and it's going to hit my other freight car I'll call that m2 its velocity um, v2 is actually equal to zero right so it has no momentum itself uh, and that's the sort of uh, the situation immediately prior uh, to the collision and so we can think of the initial momentum there as just being given by m1 v1 because m2 v2 is zero. The situation immediately after the collision is these two things are coupled together uh, and they'll be traveling with some unknown velocity, we'll call that v final, that's what we want to find out. And so the final momentum of that uh, coupled car system will be a combination of the masses m1 plus m2 times v final. And since momentum is conserved, this p initial must equal uh, p final. And so we can use that to find the final velocity of the cars as they travel towards this spring. Okay. In fact, if we think about it carefully, what's going to happen is that these objects are going to um, transfer energy into the spring and then they'll bounce off the spring. So in fact, the final speed will be the same um, uh, when they rebound off the spring as as if the cars were approaching the spring. So in fact we can we can solve for part B almost immediately just using the information we've got here. Okay, to find the compression of the spring we need to know a little bit about conservation of mechanical energy that is the kinetic energy of the coupled car system is going to be given by a half times the total mass of the car system m1 plus m2 multiplied by that velocity squared and that is going to be transferred into the potential energy uh, stored in the spring and potential energy stored in the spring is given by a half k x squared where x is the compression so x is the thing we want to find so we'll use these two equations to solve for part a we we'll use these two equations to solve for part b okay so let's we've got a bit of a strategy of how we're going to do this uh, so let's begin um, by uh, using conservation of momentum to solve that final velocity
So like I said, um, M1 V1 plus M2 V2, this was zero. That's before the collision is equal to M1 plus M2 V final after the collision, or we can write the final velocity is equal to M1 V1 divided by M1 plus M2. We can put some numbers into that as well. Uh, the car which is moving is 8,600 kilograms and it's traveling at 9.5 meters per second and we can divide by the total mass which is 1,400 kilograms plus 8,600 kilograms. Uh, you can use your calculator for that and you'll find that the final velocity there is 3.6 meters per second. It's not uh, unusual that it's uh, lower than the initial speed of 9.5 because we're dividing by a denominator which is bigger than 8,600. So in fact it looks like we've almost got a third um, of the initial velocity. So just a quick magnitude check there. Okay, um, and that uh, velocity we've solved for is actually going to be uh, the speed of the cars when they rebound off the spring as we've described earlier. So that's the solution for part B actually. Um, but we wanted that velocity so we could solve for how much the spring compresses for part A. So for part A, uh, we just need to reconcile that the kinetic energy of the coupled car, which is the total mass of the coupled car times a half times that V final squared, is equal to the kinetic energy stored in the spring. And so this is what we're doing here is just conservation of mechanical energy. So just to remind you, the change in the kinetic plus the change in the potential is equal to zero. <clears throat> and so I can write this out as my um, final minus initial kinetic energy plus my final potential in my spring minus my initial potential energy in my spring is equal to zero. Initially the spring was uncompressed so that was zero. Um, the final kinetic energy when the coupled cars come to rest against the spring that will be zero and we can rearrange that and you'll get that equation there so just where that's come from okay I want to solve for x so I need to rearrange that equation to find x so let's um, cancel the halves there um, we can divide by k and we can say that x squared is equal to m1 plus m2 divided by k times v final squared and then we just need to take the square root so in fact I'm going to take the square root of that side there and that will turn that will get rid of the squares on the x squared and the and the v final squared so the v final does not sit inside the square root okay so let's write down that numerically we've got the masses here, so 1400 kilograms plus 8600 kilograms divided by, now K, looking at the units there just be careful, 0 0.32 and then you've got mega, so by 10 to the 6 um, is uh, newtons per meter, and then V final we already solved to be 3.6 meters per second. Uh, if you put that in your calculator uh, you will evaluate a number for x which is 0 0.96 meters which seems a reasonable kind of magnitude of uh, the length of one of these kind of uh, springs that you see on uh, railway cars so um, okay and that's because the, that uh, k is enormous right so it's a very stiff spring finally we should do some assessment to make sure this is reasonable uh, so certainly we've done some magnitude checks, that seem to work out okay. The units up the top here, these guys are all masses, so it's going to have the same units as velocity, so the unit check is right. Down here, um, we've got, there's a little bit more involved here, uh, we've got something which is kilograms on the top, um, we've got newtons uh, per meter. Um, if you remember a newton is a kilogram uh, meter per second squared, um, and then we've got that's the Newton part and then we've got uh, per meter for the spring constant so actually the per meters are going to cancel here kilograms are going to cancel that's all in a square root and then the outside of that we've got a velocity meters per second so hopefully what you can see here is that my per second squared on the denominator just becomes seconds and I take the square root uh, and I've got meters per second so we end up with meters so it's the right units as well. So we've done magnitude, we've done 
units and uh, for our behavior, uh, well, let's uh, increase the initial speed um, of my uh, second car. If that's increasing, then the final speed of the two couple cars will also increase, and that will necessarily increase the amount of um, the spring has to compress by. So the behavior seems to be right as well. Okay, so there are other questions you can do for collisions in chapter 9, so get, uh, get practicing.